All right, so to make the ocean, I'm going to go back to the layout so we've got a full screen view. Uh, you may have noticed before I've actually made a full tutorial on how to make a sort of several kilometer scale high resolution ocean in Eevee that runs in real time. So check that video out if you've not seen it already, it's really good. Uh, but for this video, because I've already done a proper ocean tutorial, I'm just going to do a fast and dirty one for this video because we don't actually need excellent ocean because we're only going to see it from underneath and we're just going to see the, the sort of uh, light interacting with the waves. The way I'll do it, Shift A and then Mesh and then we'll add a plane and then bring that up a bit. And I want to bring that up to, just press N and then look at item, around about 7 metres. So I'll just go back to camera view. And you can see that's where the waves that's where the waves are going to be. It might be a little bit too uh, small, but we'll, we'll come to that later. So press N again to hide the side panel. And we're going to do pretty much what we did before. So I'm just going to press N on the keyboard, just so I don't mess up the camera. I'm going to, it's already unchecked, that's fine. Come out of there. I'm going to go into wireframe so we can see the ocean and the sand at the same time. And I want to add subdivisions to this as well. So go into modifiers and then we'll add a subdivision surface. Simple. And then we'll give it six subdivisions. Turn off optimal display so we can see what's happening, how many divisions we've got. We don't need too many divisions because uh, obviously it's not going to be that in view. So that's fine. And then control A. I'm going to add a empty, so shift A and then choose empty and choose something we can see quite easily. So maybe a sphere and then go into the properties here, just turn the size up so we can see it more easily. So now we've got that, we'll go back to the ocean bed and we're going to choose to add a displacement modifier again, same as we did before. If we can find it, uh, displacement, there we are. I'm going to do the same again, so we're going to add a new texture, click on here, give it a cloud texture, and you can see that's having an effect. I will actually come back out of there now, and then F3 to smooth it, so shade smooth. Now this is static, obviously, we need it to be moving, so what I'm going to do is just increase the scale first, so it's giving us a wave sort of look. And what I want to do now is take this empty, I'm just going to move it up a little bit, and then click back on the wave, and then go into the modifiers. For the displacement, I want to choose the coordinates to be an object. So I'll click on object, and then I'm going to choose which object do I want. So I'm going to hover my mouse over here, press E on the keyboard, What's happened now is, if I move this, it will actually move the ocean. And if I move it up and down, it will change the waves, it will change the pattern of the noise. Which is great. So what I'm going to do now is just animate this. So at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to drag this up. I'm going to change this to be a timeline. I just want to make sure I've got a decent length. So frame start. Uh, it's fine. End. So I'm going to change this to maybe, I don't know, 300. Yeah, 300 should be fine. 30 frames a second, so that's 10 seconds of animation. Click on that. And we'll hover over the timeline and press home. That will make it fit into the uh, timeline. And then I'm going to press shift and left arrow. And that will put the timeline to the beginning. If I do shift right arrow, it will go to the other end. And if I press down arrow or up arrow, it will go to the next or previous keyframe, which we've not got any yet. So we'll just, with this still connected, press I, and that'll give us the animation options. What do we want to animate? What, what keyframes do we want to insert? So I'm gonna, all I'm bothered about really is the location. Click on location, and that's now added location keyframes. Now if I go to the end, and I'll move this somewhere else, maybe about here. In fact, let's just check where's the camera. So I'll probably want the waves to be coming towards the camera. So I'm going to animate this going over in this direction. And then I press I again. And then choose location. 
Okay, and if I go back to the beginning and then play this back, you can see we're getting a wave sort of effect. It's not the greatest, obviously, but for what we need, it's uh, it should be good enough. If we want to just give it a bit more realism, what we could do is duplicate this. In fact, we'll do a new one. So Shift A, Empty, and I'll choose a cube this time, and go into the uh, options for it, make it a bit bigger, move it up. So what's happening is the waves are traveling this way, and actually I've just noticed one thing. We need to make this so it doesn't start slowly. If you notice, it's got a really slow build-up, and then at the end, if we come to the end there, it's got a gradual slowdown as well. We want it to be linear. So what I'll do is go into the oh, graph editor. Just bring this up a little bit. And then we'll click on this. So we can see what's happening. It's gradually coming up and then gradually uh, slowing down. To fix this, I'm just going to press T with my mouse over the uh, editor and change this from uh, to linear. You can see now it's completely flat, so there'll be no change in speed. If I press play now, you can see it's immediately going at the same speed. That's fine. All right, so waves would normally sort of have a cross action going against this action. So I'll, I'll do that by clicking on the uh, cube, empty, and then we'll just bring this back to be a timeline. In fact, we'll leave it as it is. And we'll press I, making sure we're on frame one. And we'll choose to keyframe the location. And then we'll go to the end. And this time, we're going to bring this this way. Somewhere about there. Press I again. And I'll hover over this and press T, linear. And now, if we play this back, Getting a slightly different effect, but I probably want those cross waves to be smaller than the um, these waves. In fact, what I need to do, what I've forgot to do, is add another displacement modifier. So that's why we didn't actually see much difference there. So add another displacement modifier. And we'll choose a new texture. And we'll go into the textures. Let's just check what the other one was. So. In here, look at this one. So this was 1.98 in scale. We want this one to be a bit smaller. So we go back to the modifiers, and then click on this icon to get this texture up. I'm going to change this to be a bit smaller. And now we're getting sort of a cross action. If I turn the top one off so you can see what's happening, Needs to change this to object as well, and then choose E, and then click on this cube. So we're getting movement coming this way. It's probably a bit too fast, actually. Or I think actually we don't want it to be. We don't want those waves to be changing. So I'm going to come back into this, and the Z location is what's what's uh, animating the rise in the height. So all I'll do is just get this and then delete it. X, delete keyframes. Now it'll be completely flat. And I think what's happening is it's looking a bit too jittery, and that's probably because there's not enough resolution on the uh, ocean. So back into the modifier for the ocean, and we'll choose a subdivision surface. I'm going to put this above the two displacements. I want to bring the scale down a little bit on the second one. I think it's a bit too fast as well, so let's click on that empty. If we click it while it's moving, no. Nope. So it's going a bit too fast. All I need to do is click on these and just take it, take it up a little bit. It's about there. And now it's much slower. 
that's fine and what I'll do now is turn back on the other displacement and see what they're like combined I think that one's also a bit too fast so we'll come back in there and we'll not affect the said or maybe we will actually we'll take all three of these and then we'll press S and scale them that will slow them down in all directions maybe take that strength up a little bit on that second one let's just look through the camera I think the scales a bit too uh, small so we're going to the first one and then I'll change the size of that be a bit bigger Maybe even more, six. And we we'll go with eight. And then for the second one, I do think that's probably a bit too uh, intense. So point three. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So we've got the motion coming towards the camera, and then we've got the sideways motion as well. So then let's go on to making the material for the ocean and we'll go back into the shaders view to do that. Make sure we've got the ocean selected. We'll click on new to add a new material. Just go into EV mode and let's turn back on the HDRI. So click on this arrow and choose scene world so that that's visible. And what we want to do is give this a see-through, well, a sort of a water material. So let's change the transmission to one. And let's change roughness to zero so we get the reflections. Let's just go into the material properties and change blend mode to alpha hashed. In fact, we could, I think we can manage alpha blend. It's a bit, it's a bit cheaper computational wise. So alpha blend. And we're getting that sort of effect. It looks almost identical, but it, it, I believe it uh, renders a bit faster. Let's try screen space refraction. I'm going to the render settings. Screen space reflections, turn that on and then turn on refraction. See if that makes any difference. Not a massive amount, to be honest. Let's try changing the IOR to 1, maybe 1.3. 1 uh, 1.3. Looks at 1.3. I mean, I think water is 1.33. Try that. Let's just have a test with this. So turn the colour right down to black, perhaps. And what we need to also add now is a light. So let's go into the... Let's just expand this up a bit to there. And we'll add another 3D view. I'm going to shift A. And then choose a light and choose a sun and I don't want it to cast shadow so I go into the light properties and turn off cast shadow so we're getting nice uh, brightness again what I can do is just bring that up maybe rotate it around a bit get an effect we like something like that we increase the brightness I think that should be fine. Maybe increase the angle a bit as well, just to soften the, uh, just to soften those uh, sand dunes. And that's pretty much a basic ocean material. I mean, obviously, if you watch my other tutorial, we go into uh, a great deal of depth on creating an ultra realistic uh, water shader. But for this, this should be fine. And the next thing we want to do is make sure we can't see into the distance. And to do that, we'll make a volume in the next part.